I'm gonna regret this. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and yesterday I asked you guys if there was any sort of burning questions that you had for me because I was planning to do a Q&A. And the response to that was incredible. I got a huge amount of questions, more than I could ever answer in one video. So I figured the way that I would sort of go about answering these questions was to answer as many as I could within 10 minutes. And so I figured the way I'd go about handling this was to answer as many questions as I possibly could within 10 minutes. But not only that, I decided to make it even harder on myself because apparently I love um, putting myself through hell. I decided to add in some Hot Ones Hot Sauce, the Last Stab Maruga Scorpion Special Edition Sauce. First off, I just wanna give credit where credit's due because this whole video was inspired by the Hot Ones show, which you guys definitely already know about. If you don't, you should definitely check it out. But if you've never seen it, the premise of that show is eating progressively hotter hot wings while answering questions, and I figured, why not try the same thing? I've done like five hot sauce videos and they all do terribly, so there's really no reason for me to do this. Now, I hope you're not thinking that I'm just gonna do dabs of this hot sauce because that truly is insane and crazy. Instead, what I'm gonna do is take these hot wings, which actually, um, when I ordered them, were supposed to be mild wings, and dab this hot sauce onto it. And every time I take too long answering a question, I have to eat one of these wings with the hot sauce on it. Um, the rules are kind of loose. Uh, again, this is really just sort of a self-pain thing and not so much um, anything else. No, honestly, I want to give you guys honest answers and I feel like this is an interesting way of doing it because I'm not gonna be able to control what I say when I eat a lot of this hot sauce. So that's, that's the reason behind it. Also, there was supposed to be 12 wings, but um, I didn't eat lunch, so now there's eight. But really quick, before we get into it, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Rejuvenator. Rejuvenator is the best way to keep your sneakers looking fresh and clean. As you can see here, I've got a pair of Air Jordan 3s, which are a little dirty. And what I'm planning to do is actually spray these with the Rejuvenator water and stain repellent to keep these looking fresh and clean. But before you do that, what you need to do is clean up your sneakers so that none of the dirt and grime gets sealed in by the water and stain repellent. And the way I'm going to do that is use the Rejuvenator Advanced Sneaker Cleaning Solution. This is the best multi-purpose sneaker cleaning solution. I use it to clean pretty much all my sneakers in my entire collection. What you want to do is add a couple drips into some water. Water, mix it up with the Rejuvenator brush and then start scrubbing your shoes. Cleaning the shoe is really easy to do. All you have to do is scrub it down with the Rejuvenator brush and the Rejuvenator Advanced Sneaker Cleaning Solution until it foams. There are different kinds of brushes that Rejuvenator makes for different kinds of materials. So for things like Prime Knit and Fly Knit, I would use the soft brush. And then for something like this, which is more a plasticky sort of leather, I can use the medium brush. This medium brush is great because it gets all the dirt and the grime off the upper of the shoe without leaving sort of any scuffs or any scratches on the upper. If you want to check out any of these products for yourself, make sure to check out Rejuvenator by clicking the link in the description below and using my discount code SETH for 10% off your entire order. What you want to do once the shoe is clean and you've let it dry is take the Rejuvenator water and stain repellent. You're going to want to hold the can upright and spray 6 to 8 inches away from the surface and then apply light even overlapping strokes. For best results, apply multiple coats as opposed to one heavy coat and allow about 15 to 20 minutes drying time in between coats. Once you've sprayed your shoe a few times, allow a minimum of 6 hours after application before wearing your sneaker. And then you're pretty much good to go. Once again, check out Rejuvenator in the link in the description below and use my discount code SETH for 10% off your order. sort of rethought some things. I figured I shouldn't go into this without a backup plan. Like I put a pretty hefty dab on each one of these wings and yes, I rubbed them in a little bit so it's a little bit more widespread and it's not gonna be such like a, you know, such a bang on each one but uh, it's still not gonna be great especially because there's eight wings and I suck at answering questions quickly. No shame if I drink these. I'm just saying that for me. I mean, you guys probably don't care but that's what these are for. Uh, you know what, I should get paper towels as well because last time I did this, I threw up. So here's the tweet. There was 136 responses, so I'm just gonna go down the list and uh, answer as many as I possibly can within 10 minutes. And again, if I pause or if I just can't get to a question quickly enough, um, we're gonna eat a wing. So in the beginning, it shouldn't be too bad. <sighs> okay, so here we go. I'm gonna start the stopwatch <sighs> right now. First question. When did you start your YouTube and what was your tipping point for your channel success? Keep up the continued grind, man. That's from Untied Hawaii. I love your channel. If you guys haven't seen his channel, make sure to check it out. How did I start my, what was my tipping point on YouTube? I guess the tipping point for me was when I started to gain a lot of subscribers and I started working with brands. That's when I knew I was doing something correctly and that's when I just started to really enjoy doing it because there was some reward for all the time and the hours I was putting in. Next question is from Thomas. Since when did you start loving sneakers? 
I've always loved sneakers. I think when I really started to get into them was when I worked at Vans when I was about 14 or, well, no, 16, because you can't work when you're 14 or 15 in the United States that I know of. Um, but no, so I was working at Vans. I really loved working there. It was a great environment. I used to like skateboarding. I wasn't really good at it or anything like that, but I used to really enjoy it. Um, so having a discount in shoes made me start buying shoes. Frederick Napier asks, do you ever think there will be a line of shoes that will be more iconic than Jordan's? That's gonna be tough. I think Yeezy's giving them a run for their money because everyone knows about Yeezy's and I think when this generation grows up, people are gonna know more about Yeezy's than they do. Ah, shit. Here we go. Uh oh. It's burning. It's burning all right. Uh oh. Okay. Ah, it's burning a little bit. Oh. Okay, I think when this generation grows up, more people are gonna know who Kanye was than who Jordan was because <coughs> Jordan didn't play <coughs> for that younger generation. It was just at the end of my generation and I'm like 26. Um, okay, <coughs> Kairu Yang says, you ever think you'll come to Egypt and do you prefer satin or leather? Interesting question. Um, hopefully I'll come to e Egypt and uh, I think leather overall. Uh, Marcus Ponti says, will you ever come to Denmark? I'd love to, I don't know if I will. Um, Matthew says, what would be your advice for someone who wants to start a channel based on sneakers and or fashion? That's a really great question, Matthew. A lot of people have been asking me that question. Does that count as a pause? Well, oh. Oh. what's them in my eye. Oh my God. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Ah. Okay. What would be your advice for someone who wants to start a YouTube channel based on sneakers and or fashion? Consistency. <sighs> Consistency is king. That is the most important thing. If you're not being consistent with your channel and your content, no one's gonna care no matter how good your channel is. If you put out one amazing video and you don't put out anything else, you're gonna get subscribers and they're all gonna disappear after a second <clears throat> or a couple months because they know you're not putting anything else out. Uh, okay, size1999 says, how do you feel about the Nike Off-White releasing more and more sneakers? Do you think the hype will go down? I definitely think whenever there's, you know, an influx of things being released, hype does go down. Um, I think with Nike and Off-White, they're still on sort of that high. If you look at it, you know, same way that you look at Nike. Three minutes, wow, I didn't answer anything, man. Okay, um, short answer, yes, I think hype's gonna go down a little bit. I think it's cool that more people are getting the opportunity to buy the sneakers, though. Name cannot be blank said, if you have a budget of $300, what one pair of shoes would you get? Retail and resale allowed. If I didn't have the pair already, um, it'd be a pair of Jordan 1s. I'm not sure which one, whichever one's around 300 bucks. Jack Bachelor says, what do you prefer, the Off-White 10 or the Nike, whoa, Yeezy? Um, I think overall the 10 is more comprehensive collection, so I prefer it for that reason. However, the Nike Yeezys, the 1s and 2s are very are classic sneakers. And go for a load of money. Resale wise, Yeezys, just for wearing wise, the 10. <sighs> Noe Ju High says, normally do you get the sneakers like the recent Yeezy 350 Butters for free? Or do you pay refill retail for them from the shops? Cheers from Singapore. Um, a lot of sneakers I buy, like a majority of my sneakers I buy. I try and get them for retail, but like for example, with the Yeezy 350 Butters that he bought up, brought up, I paid resale for them. 100, like actually more than what resale usually is because I got them a little bit early. I think I paid 400 for them which is more than you should pay for them. Yeah, so sometimes I'll get brand sneakers from brands. Um, usually it's less hype stuff. I usually don't get hype stuff from brands. Um, and sometimes, you know, if I'm working with a sneaker store like Sneaker Flea or something like that, they'll let me review sneakers in their stores. Thomas says, do you plan on pl plugging your Twitch streams a little more and doing those more often? They're fun to watch. Thank you, Thomas. I appreciate that. If you guys haven't checked me out on Twitch, make sure to do that. It's just Seth Bowler. That's that's how you find it. It's just Seth Bowler. Um, I'll do them more, definitely. Um, I'm sweating like a... Oh, wow. Okay. I'll plug in more if you guys are interested. Make sure to check them out. Max Khan says, what's your ultimate grail? Ultimate grail? I don't know if I have one. If it's a sneaker that if I could only have one sneaker forever, it'd be the bread ones. Kaz says, always wondered if you use sneaker shields or similar products in your J's. Fan from Australia. Um, I think he meant to say if if you use sneaker shields. Um, I haven't until very recently. Like someone, uh, an employee at Foot Locker, a great employee at Foot Locker, sold me on a pair, never used them before. Um, it worked okay, but it, you know, well that's. Mm, cool. It's on my lips, it's on my lips. It's on my lips. Oh. Well, drop some of my shoes. Oh, oh man.
A little bigger, bigger chip for someone who wants to start a sneakers fashion channel. From a meet, Reniga. Very similar to the one I answered before. Again, consistency, but I guess I'll give you a new tip because I've already said that. I think the most important thing is to use keywords and make sure you're using searchable titles because no matter how good your content is, if it's not something that you can find on you know, a search or anything like that, because when you don't have any subscribers, it's the only way to find things, make sure you're using Google Trends, make sure that you're using tags that aren't clickbait, but tags that are relevant to current events. Um, relevant to the video, definitely. Uh, Elliot says, do you think there's a common aesthetic element or X factor for, oh, that's a good question. Do you think there's a common element, aesthetic, or an X factor sort of among all shoes that make them a hit versus a brick? That's a really great question. First of all, I'd love to say that it was design. I'd love to say that it's all design that determines whether a sneaker sells or whether it sits. Unfortunately, it's a lot to do with supply and demand. It's a lot to do with how limited a sneaker is. That's the unfortunate thing. Actually, not even that. It's a, it's a lot to do with how hyped the sneaker is because there are runs of sneakers that there's only like 500 pairs, but no one wants them because uh, they're not popular. Um, it's all about what the cool people were wearing, which is unfortunate, but that's what it is. Um, Darren Nelson says, if you could only wear one sneaker in two colorways for the rest of your life, what would it be? The Air Jordan 1. Um, Andrade says, if you were to choose one moment when you realize your YouTube channel might sustain a career, what was it? Uh, when I left my job. <laughs> Galvito says, what are the 10 sneakers you wish that you... I'm a Galvito. I'm my sneakers again. Good thing I use Rejuvenator. Eight minutes. Wit says, how do you tell fake versus authentic Ultra Boost? Um, usually the boost is a good indicator and, and the overall shape of the shoe. That'll definitely help. There's no like exact science to it because all fakes are different. Uh, if you could choose any silhouette to give your own spin on, which would it be? Um, I'd love to do the Air Jordan 1, but I feel like a lot of people have already done that. Um, I'm probably be an Adidas sneaker because I feel like you have a lot of creative freedom with Adidas. Um, what do you think is the most influential influencer in the game right now, why? Right now, I think it's Virgil. I think more so than Kanye because what Virgil is doing is very impressive. He's a designer, so he understands design. He understands what works and what doesn't. The fact he's working with Louis Vuitton is a huge thing. And the way his off-white sneakers blew into the game the way they did, just I think he's I think he's number one right now. Um, let's see. Not sneaker related from Adam John. Sorry. Oh, that was a hard one. Adam John says, non-sneaker related, but can you elaborate on your job a little and share what you do on a day-to-day -day basis as an industrial designer? Very curious. That's great. Well, as of right now, I no longer work as an industrial designer. YouTube is my full-time job. When I was working as an industrial designer, I worked at a lot of different places. I worked at an electronics firm, so I designed um, electronics for brands like Panasonic, LG, stuff like that. And then I worked at a kitchenware place, and I worked at Martha Stewart for a while designing kitchenware, the two different kitchenware places. Um, then I worked at BarkBox designing dog toys. And in all those places, I did a lot of CAD. I did a lot of sketching. Um, <sighs> whoo, got friggin' hot sauce on my phone. Um, I'd love to elaborate more, but honestly, I'm dying right now. <sighs> Christopher George says, if you could collaborate with one brand for a shoe, what brand would it be and what model? Or would it be your own model? I think, honestly, the dream has always been collaborating with Jordan Brand. But if I had to design my own model, it would be with Adidas because Adidas gives you more creative freedom. Case in point, have you seen Don C's model? I don't think he had any creative freedom on that shoe, and if he did, what was he thinking? It's terrible, terrible. <coughs> Didn't throw up, just coughed. Last question, getting to the end of the time. Last question, do you think there are any, oh, man. It's all over my lips, it's all over my lips. Do you have any regrets concerning your YouTube channel? No, none. And it's time, that's it. It's actually a little bit over time. But uh, I gotta finish the wings. <sighs> Guys, I know this was a little unorthodox. I know this wasn't, you know, the regular Q&A and it really seemed unnecessary probably to both you and myself. But uh, like I said, man, self, I don't even, I can't think of words at this point. <coughs> To be fair, not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I've done a lot of hot sauce challenges, so that could be the reason. Maybe I'm just getting used to it at this point. I think it's fair to say this will be the last one because I can almost guarantee this video is gonna do terribly awful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching once again. Huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Rejuvenator. Really quick before we end the video, let's see if we can get this hot sauce off the top of these shoes because 
It stains, man. And I don't want it ruining these threes. If you've got a pair of rejuvenated water and stain repellent tree to choose, all you have to do is actually run them under some water to get most of the stain off. And in a lot of cases, that's all you have to do with things like ketchup or mustard or anything like that. However, with things like this hot sauce, it does seem to stain a little bit more than normal things that you would drop on your shoes. So what you might want to do is go back over the shoe with the advanced sneaker cleaning solution, scrub it down, and then reapply the water and stain repellent when you're done. But guys, that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Check it out. The shoes are good as new. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, if you didn't, I'm sorry. I I don't know what I was thinking. Subscribe to me on YouTube if you haven't yet. Um, check out some of my other reviews. Check out my IGTV channel. Check out my Twitch. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.